for the new, 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 Okay. Okay, so this first one, this is a update? Kind of update. So, you know, we've carried the Wi-Fi 3 for a bit. This is a Wi-Fi Bluetooth all-in-one chip that you can program with MicroPython. It would work really good with that Nordic PPK to measure the low power usage. They're no longer selling it without headers attached. We still have some of the ones that do have no headers attached in the shop, but we will no longer have those after those sell through. So this is the new version. So it's kind of an update. All right. And then next up, the uh, revision to the micro bit is in our store. That's right. We sold through most of them, but we still have some, I think. We have some of the Go Packs, which have yeah. the USB cable, battery, and battery pack, which I recommend anyways. Mm -hmm. So we talked about this already. I'll go through it again. The micro bit V2 is an update to the original micro bit, which has been out for like five years or so, like four or five mm -hmm. years. The new Microbit V2 has a much better, bigger processor. It's an RF NRF52 series, um, so uh, a really lovely upgrade to the NRF51 series. It's much faster. It has more memory. It has more capabilities, and that means it can run MicroPython a lot better, which is what a lot of people were using it for, and if you used MicroPython on the Microbit V1, you know that you kind of ran out of memory pretty fast. It wasn't really... It was very minimal. Now you have a ton of memory, so this is an excellent excellent board for running MicroPython on, but you can still run all the same make code that you've done before, and I think even Arduino will run on this as well. Um, they've also upgraded the little notches at the bottom so your alligator clips don't slip, and on the back, it's got um, even more stuff. It still has a magnetometer and compass, so you can do like orientation stuff. Um, the button is now also an on-off button as well as reset. Uh, the programming method is the same. It fits in all the same cases. Um, but it also adds a speaker. This is like one of our favorite little buzzers. It has a speaker on the back and a microphone. So it can do audio projects like making beeps and playing sound effects, as well as listening. So it can do um, like voice recognition type projects as well. And um, on the front, there is um, a little, that the micro bit logo on the front, the little gold one, is a capacitive touch um, sensor as well now and it didn't used to be that said it's completely backwards compatible with all of your accessories and all the code if you have make code um just select micro bit v2 and when you download it it'll automatically work on either one so that's kind of sweet um we have it in the individual and also the go pack the individuals yeah we sold out they're a little less expensive the go packs are recommended though because they come with batteries they come with yeah, a battery yeah. pack and usb and if you're a school and you're or in a, a club or workshop. You get a bunch. You get a bunch. You can get 10 packs. So you get 10 micro bits, 10 batteries, 10 USB cables, 10 like, you know, uh, battery holders, uh, 10 of everything, basically 10 of the go packs. And it's a little cheaper. Um, so you get those all in once. It's a more eco-friendly way to pick up a whole bunch of them. All right. Next up. Okay, next up uh, from Raspberry Pi Foundation, we've got this cute fan. Um, so this fan... I'm a fan. It um, comes as a three-part kit. You get a little plastic piece, you get a fan piece, and you get a heat sink. Watch out. The heat sink, I was fooled at first. It comes in a little piece of paper. I didn't see it. The fan comes with three pins. You plug those three pins into your Raspberry Pi 4. It's designed for the Raspberry Pi 4, and it fits into um, the original, uh, the official Raspberry Pi case. You put the, you see the heat sink goes on the chip. The fan goes in the case. It closes up. Obviously, you can't fit a bonnet on top, but that's okay if it's just you know being a Raspberry Pi on its own. And um, that way, it can stay cooler. This is great if you're doing you know, machine learning or, or a game emulation or other high computation tasks. It's not required for the Raspberry Pi 4. The Raspberry Pi 4 works just fine without a fan. But for people who want to overclock it or want, they, you know, they're playing a lot of YouTube videos or doing a lot of like, high computational activities and they're noticing that the raspberry pi is slows down because the power you know they get a little lightning bolt in the corner um this fan or sorry not the lightning bolt the little temperature thingy in the corner telling you that it's starting to overheat it's okay it'll slow down but if you don't want it to slow down this fan will help out so if you have the official raspberry pi case plug this in you're good to go okay and uh i have a a short video from oh, the cool. Raspberry Pi folks that, that they explain it even better.
Okay, next up, we got it coming soon. It's coming soon, but it's very exciting. Um, we'll have this in the next few days. We just have to finish testing them all. Uh, this is the Feather M4 can. Um, so what is this? You love the Feather M4. It is your favorite microcontroller board. Mine too. 7051. How can you not love the Cortex M4 running at 120 megahertz? All these cool peripherals, DACs, ADCs, um, SPI, I2C, tons of PWMs. Um, all the good stuff you need to run CircuitPython or Arduino uh, super fast. Love this chip, but could we make it better? Yes. Um, the SAM E51 is a variant of the SAM D51, and the E stands for CAN. Actually, it doesn't. E stands for Ethernet, but it also has CAN support. So um, it has a built-in hardware CAN peripheral, which means that all you need to do is add a CAN transceiver, which kind of handles like the voltage stuff on the end, um, and now you can connect it to CAN bus. And it's like a pretty good price. This thing's gonna be like 25 bucks. And um, it works wonderfully with CAN on either Arduino or CircuitPython. We have code for both. We also gave it a bit of a scrubbing. We improved the power supply a little bit. We made the LEDs uh, use less power. Uh, we improved like the NeoPixel so it doesn't, uh, it's not on by default. You can turn it off for lower power usage. It's got USB-C instead of micro B. So it's kind of like a little bit spruced up. Um, it still has, the, the, what's nice about the SAM E51 is that it's like basically pin compatible, right? The only difference is that there's these two pins that can do CAN, and those pins weren't routed on the original Feather because I kind of knew eventually I would make this board. So, you know, if you have any existing projects that use the Feather M4, it's basically like a drop-in replacement because pin A4 is the same pin A4 and like the I2C is on the same exact pins. The only difference is now we have these extra CAN bus pins connected to the CAN bus transceiver. Um, there's an uh, onboard 120 ohm terminator. You can disable it by cutting a trace if you like, but by default it's on. We also include um, a little 5 volt uh, switch cap converter to give you a 5 volt into the transceiver. Um, it's not required by some CAN buses, but we wanted to make it compatible with you know uh, as many specifications as possible. So you get a full 5 volt differential signal, uh, even if you're running on a 3 volt battery. Um, so this is, uh, you know, a, a nice upgrade. I like how compact it is. You just get your Feather M4 and on the end, CAN bus, and then we'll have uh, Arduino and CircuitPython code examples released so you can integrate it, read data from your car or whatever, or connect to an existing CAN bus. Um, a lot of people really like CAN, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we could make them happy. Uh, so coming soon, sign up, and we'll get these in the shop in the next week or so. Uh, but a lovely upgrade to the Feather M4 uh, family for those who want to do automotive or robotics projects. All right, and Star Wars Show tonight, besides our customers, our community, our team, and you, Lady Ada, is this? It's the TMP117, a precision temperature sensor. Uh, you know, we've actually had some people say, well, I want a very high precision, high accuracy temperature sensor that works at a very wide range. This works from like negative 55 to 150 degrees. You can get the 0.1 degree C uh, typical accuracy between 0 and 85 C. Once you get to like negative 55 or 150, it goes down to like, and still shockingly good 0.3 or so, or 0.4% um, degrees centigrade. Um, but a lovely little sensor. Uh, we even have a little cutout, so it has a very fast uh, reactivity. Um, it's I squared C, it has interrupts, it has thresholds, it has like a built-in EEPROM, it has, um, like it has the ability to do like NIST uh, uh, traceability because you can like track it by its unique identifier. Um, it's just a great, like if you want like the really like the best temperature sensor, um, this is it. So this is an earlier prototype I had that's purple. That's from Osh Park. Uh, so that's why it's purple and the one in the store is black, but it's the same sensor. And the little cutout that's in the center um, means that it doesn't, the, it, you don't have the um, thermal resistance of the board affecting it. So it, it's very fast to react. So you can see um, it's quite sensitive. I think it's a 16-bit sensor, so you get like 0 0.0087 degrees C uh, per bit. And I put my finger on it, and you see it heats up pretty quickly. Um, it's not going to get to, a four, of course, a uh, full 100 degrees um, Fahrenheit because my skin isn't as hot because it's a little cool in here. But um, it does heat up, and then when I let go, uh, the temperature starts falling pretty quickly as well. So a very fast sensor, it goes over I2C. You can put up to four of them on one I2C bus by changing the addressing. 
it's a little expensive um, compared to low cost temperature sensors like the PCT 2075, but you're not going to get anything with better precision or accuracy. Like this is it. I couldn't find anything that's better with I squared C than this sensor. This is this is the cream of the crop, as they say. So um, for those who who need it, you want it. This is the best temperature sensor you can get, and it's STEMI QT. So you just plug it. Like I've got it plugged into my uh, OLED feather here. It's plug and play. Really easy to use. And we have, as you might expect, both Arduino and Python and CircuitPython code. So you can use it with your Uno or your Raspberry Pi or your Feather and 4 can, whatever you like. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's new products this week. Yes. New, 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 new.